I could be drinking it too. Let's do a Jerusalem.
still have the services or is there a service there? Thank <laughs> you. 
College of Art. No, that isn't it.
couple. Please be seated. <clears throat> As customary in this great hall, we begin by asking guests with cell phones to please silence them. Not so customary, it is to inform our guests with young children that, should the need arise, a live broadcast of this ceremony and a children's video are playing in the lobby. I now have the honor to present Dr. Michael Clagg, Dean of the Bloomberg School of Public Health, who will preside over these exercises. <clears throat> Good, Good afternoon. Graduates, family and friends, distinguished guests, faculty and staff, welcome to the 2015 convocation of the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. This year marks the 99th anniversary of the school, and as in every year since 1916, this is the happiest day of the year. Today we graduate 901 students from, from 54 countries. So they're not all here, so don't, don't worry. They're not all here. One hundred and fifty three of you will receive doctoral degrees and seven hundred and forty eight master's degrees. Of those seven hundred and forty eight, about half, three hundred and sixty one will earn the MPH degree, the Masters of Public Health. One hundred and sixty five will receive the Masters of Health Science. 144, the Master of Science in Public Health. Wow. They've won so far. 33, the Master of Science. <laughs> Comes with a thesis, so it counts twice as much. And, no. and uh, 25, the Master of Health Administration. We have 12 who are earning the Master of Science in Nursing and MPH combined, and 18 the Master of Public Policy. So congratulations. Well, when I spoke to many of you at orientation on the first day, I promised that obtaining a degree at the Bloomberg School would be a transformational experience. I didn't mention, however, how much work it would be. In any case, I trust you now will agree on both points, both being transformational and the amount of work. During your time with us, you've done far more than just take courses. You've enriched the life of the school and the community surrounding our school. Over the last year, you've collaborated with over 100 community-based organizations throughout Baltimore, contributing, contributing roughly 9,000 hours of service. Collectively, you've demonstrated a spirit and an energy that inspires all of us in our efforts to make the world a better place. That spirit and energy were truly manifest last month after the riot in Baltimore. Many will remember this year as a year when pain and inequality in our city bubbled to the surface. But I'll remember it also as a year when our students, our staff, and our faculty rededicated themselves to the challenge of improving our community. Because of you, we're now asking ourselves, how do we attack the root causes of this unrest? How do we make Baltimore a better place? The answers to these questions will change and strengthen our school and city for years to come. In addition to you, our graduates, there's two other groups that I want to recognize today. The first is our faculty, a distinguished group who takes enormous pleasure in being with you here today, sharing this rite of passage and looking forward to collaborating with you in the future as colleagues. I would like to ask our faculty to stand and be acknowledged. <laughs> 
Second, we salute the parents, spouses, children, and friends of our graduates who have provided moral and financial support before you arrived at our school and during your time here. Would you please stand and be acknowledged? The outstanding reputation of our school depends on the quality of the students we attract, the accomplishments of our faculty who mentor them, and the alumni that they become. Indicative of the close relationship between alumni, faculty, and students, our Chief Marshal, Dr. Nicholas Mathis, is an esteemed alumnus of the Bloomberg School. Please join me in thanking him for making the trip from Boston to be with us today. Nicholas. So today, when we finish, you make that transition to alumni. As you receive your diploma and leave this hall, you'll become part of a unique network of over 20,000 individuals, public health scholars and leaders working around the world who count on you to succeed them. Many of you will soon begin working at health service agencies, research centers, and academic institutions staffed and led by many distinguished graduates of the Bloomberg School of Public Health. The charge that we give you on this journey is simple. It's the same as our motto, protecting health, saving lives. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. OK, good. Since its founding in 1916, this has been the implicit motto of our school. Now, almost 100 years later, the legacy becomes your legacy. The world is counting on you, and I can't wait to see what you accomplish. I would now like to introduce Mrs. Uh, Ms. Catherine Coons, President of the Student Assembly. Thank you, Dean Clagg. It is a great honor to be here today to celebrate with you the 2015 graduating class of the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Today, we are celebrating this occasion with family, friends, classmates, and loved ones who have seen you through the wonderful roller coaster of a ride I endearingly call the Hopkins Experience. From capstones, problem sets, field studies, head scratching PCR data, and qualifying exams, you're here today because you've made it. Please accept my sincerest congratulations to you all. Looking back this year, Public health has captured the attention of many households with big headlines ranging from the Ebola epidemic in West Africa to discussions about vaccine policy reformation and the measles outbreak in the US and to emergency response in the wake of a natural disaster like the earthquakes in Nepal. I was on a flight earlier this year and was engaging in light conversation with the passenger next to me prior to the safety announcements. After finding out I'm a student in public health, she asked me what we do during non-crises moments, as she said the quote, non-peak times, as she worded it. Before I could answer, the flight attendants had come by with the beverage and snack cart, and the sweet woman next to me had settled into reading her book for the duration of the flight. I couldn't help but think more about my answer and this notion of public health. Pause for a minute and think about what public health means to you. Is it simply a field of study or an umbrella term you use to describe your work? Or is public health a skill that you're secretly hoping all of your connections from Hopkins on LinkedIn endorse you in? <laughs> Levity aside, most of us um, think of it as um, public health as a noun or adjective form. What if, though, you were to think about public health um, as a verb or an action, as in you do public health each and every day? The fact of the matter is, is that public health is active. The active form of, this active form of public health is something that we as graduates of the School of Public Health put into practice each and every day, not only in a professional context, but in our own individual lives too. Furthermore, what if our day-to-day -day living of doing public health enabled those around us to realize that they too are practitioners of public health as well? Imagine the impact it would make. 
We take for granted it's second nature for us to swap out that soda at lunch for a water or take the stairs over the elevator. These seemingly small actions have a far greater impact than you realize because you've set an example for someone you've never met who is watching you from down the hall exercising this notion of public health as an action. Then the ripple effect takes over and that person starts practicing this active form of public health every day in his or her own life. As future public health professionals, we drive the field by asking questions. The what ifs, the how can we make this more accessible, efficient, or how else can we measure this, whether we're at the bench, in the field, or studying policy. These are questions that are all ingrained in our thought process. Saying these questions aloud sounds so very ordinary, but in these ordinary questions, we find the extraordinary. No question is ever too small. Whatever you do, continue asking questions. The moment you stop asking questions is the moment you cease at doing public health as an action. Never be afraid of the questions. Live in these questions and know that the curiosity driving you to ask these questions will give you answers. Maybe not the answer, but answers nonetheless. Public health is the harmonious intersection of science and practice of disease prevention and the art of disseminating this knowledge to protect and prolong health for all people. Public health does not discriminate. By doing public health, we seek to raise the quality of life for all people and ensure that we can provide every person a more level playing field than what they had before. From this perspective, I would say that public health results in a beautiful symphony of multiple disciplines. However, in reality, there will always be cacophony and discord around us that headline news. Without this noise, we very well could be without careers. Our response to the dissonance, though, is what defines us. Like conductors tweaking an original score, we shape the trajectory of the cacophony that makes headline news and the static that makes for interesting coffee cup conversations. If I could go back now and finish my conversation with the sweet woman next to me on the plane, I would tell her that public health isn't just about the sensationalized headlines that ebb and flow, but rather an everyday practice that we are all doing in some form or another. And in so doing of public health each and every day, we as graduates of the Bloomberg School of Public Health will live its mission each and every day by protecting health and saving lives, millions at a time. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to welcome Chief Marshal Mathis to join me at the podium. Each year, Student Assembly's Honors and Award Committee selects outstanding faculty for excellence in teaching. This year's Golden Apple recipients are Alan Scott from Molecular Microbiology and Immunology. Dr. Scott brings a level of enthusiasm, clarity, and an element of curiosity to the Principles of Immunology course that is unrivaled within the school. <laughs> Larissa Jennings from International Health. Larissa brings a commanding knowledge of the qualitative research and explains concepts easily, and her warm persona makes her an absolute pleasure to work with. Next, we have Vincent Navarro from Health Policy and Management. Good. We'd like to add this is his fifth golden apple.
Welcome. And Dr. Navarro is one of the few who's encouraged me to think critically in a big picture way. And his questioning of the establishment and how we run academic institutions and teach public health has been inspiring, unique, and a huge part of my experience here at Hopkins. And the last golden apple that we have, um, that we um, awarded this year was Mr. David Bishai from Population, Family, and Reproductive Health. And Dr. Bashai takes the time to ensure that all students are getting the most out of each and every lecture of his, and that the extra time and effort added extreme value to my studies here at Hopkins. So we also, Student Assembly also selects faculty and instructors who demonstrate a commitment to teaching, advising, student mentoring, and makes significant contributions to the student's quality of life. The ANTRA Awards are also selected by Student Assembly's Honors and Awards Committee, and they were presented yesterday at the Honors and Awards Ceremony. Thank you, Katie. Delta Omega, the National Honor Society for Public Health, was founded at our school 90 years ago. Those elected to our chapter, the Alpha chapter of Delta Omega, were inducted as special ceremony yesterday. The Alpha chapter has created this stole denoting membership in Delta Omega. And earlier this month, Masters of Health Administration students were inducted into Upsilon Phi Delta, the National Academic Honor Society for Healthcare Administrative Programs. In addition, outstanding graduating and continuing students were recognized for special achievements at a wonderful reception last evening. It's been a busy couple of days. Students elected to Phi Beta Kappa will be inducted at a ceremony tomorrow. The names of the inductees into honor societies and other award recipients are listed in your program. I ask all awardees to stand and be recognized. Ernest Stemmons graduated from our school in 1932 and went on to become the sixth dean. The Ernest Lyman Stebbins Medal was established by an act of the school's advisory board to recognize a faculty member for exceptional contributions to the development of educational programs throughout the school. Conferring of the Stebbins Medal is the highest tribute this school can pay to a faculty member. A committee of faculty have selected as the recipient of the Stevens Medal for 2015 one of the university's most respected and esteemed faculty members, Dr. Stephen Ganji. Dr. Ganji is a senior associate dean for academic affairs and professor in the Department of Epidemiology. Dr. Ganji. In addition, I'm pleased to announce several other recipients of prestigious awards who are with us today. It's important to re recognize that the recipients of these awards are selected not by our school, but by and in competition with the rest of the Johns Hopkins University community. As I call your name, I ask that you please stand. The Heritage Award honors alumni and friends of Johns Hopkins who have contributed outstanding service over an extended period to the progress of the university or the activities of the Alumni Association. Please join me in recognizing two of today's attendees who received the 2015 Heritage Award from Johns Hopkins University. Dr. Alfred Sommer, Dean Emeritus, University Distinguished Professor and Professor of Epidemiology. And Dr. Laura Morlock, Associate Dean for Faculty and Education and Professor of Health Policy and Management. The Global Achievement Award honors alumni who exemplify the Johns Hopkins tradition of excellence and who have brought credit to the university and their profession in the international arena through their professional achievements or humanitarian service. Please join me in congratulating two awardees. The first is Dr. Vicente Navarro, Professor of Health Policy and Management.
And the second is Dr. Luke Mullaney, Professor of International Health. <laughs> alumni who receive the Distinguished Alumni Award typify the Johns Hopkins tradition of excellence and have brought credit to the university by their personal accomplishments, professional achievement, or humanitarian service. Congratulations to Dr. Ellen Silbergeld, Professor of Environmental Health Services, the Health Sciences, the 2015 Distinguished Alumni Award. Ellen? <laughs> you will find a complete list of these award recipients in your program. I now have the honor to introduce our convocation speaker, one of the world's outstanding leaders in public health. Dr. Tom Frieden was appointed by President Barack Obama direct, to direct the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in June 2009. As the director of our nation's health protection agency, he works to control health threats from infectious diseases, respond to public health emergencies, and tackle the leading causes of suffering and death in the U.S. and around the world. Dr. Frieden started his career as an epidemiologic intelligence uh, service officer assigned to New York City. He led New York's tuberculosis control program to success by reducing multi-drug resistant cases by 80%. Afterwards, he worked in India to build a tuberculosis control program that has saved three million lives. Dr. Frieden returned to New York to serve as the commissioner of the New York City Health Department from 2002 to 2009, where he led the effort to reduce smoking, eliminate trans fat from restaurants, and initiate the country's largest community-based electronic health records project. Dr. Frieden received his undergraduate degree from Oberlin College and his MD and MPH degrees from Columbia University. He completed residency training in internal medicine at Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center with a fellowship in infectious diseases at Yale University. He has received numerous awards and honors and has published more than 200 scientific articles. We are privileged to have with us today a visionary leader who has profoundly improved the health of people around the world and saved lives. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. Tom Frieden. Welcome and thank you so much for allowing me to be with you here for a few moments to recognize your accomplishments. I want to also recognize not just the students, but the faculty, the staff, the community, and most of all, the parents. So don't forget to thank your parents, especially if you may need to move back in with them after graduation. <laughs> I'd like to start with a confession. I actually get quite nervous about giving commencement addresses. A commencement speaker is kind of like the person who sings the Star Spangled Banner at the World Series. Nobody came to hear you, <laughs> and you'll only be remembered if you mess it up. <laughs> now, I saw Mike Bloomberg last week, and he put me at ease. He assured me that I would do fine and reminded me that if I didn't, it would destroy Hopkins forever. In June of 1979, while I was in college, I went on a hiking trip with my father in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, not far from here. The rhododendron were in glorious bloom. My father was dealing with the onset of Parkinson's disease, and we walked through the mountains on a glorious summer day, and he commented that he was struck by the fact that when he walked in that quiet, beautiful countryside, he could almost feel free from the stiffness of Parkinson's disease. He was a wonderful cardiologist. He was a doctor's doctor. He was kind and rigorous. He didn't say much, but what he said always had a big impact. And as we walked along, he said, you know, I've noticed that you like science and you like politics. And if you put those two things together, you really have the field of public health. You might want to consider going into that as a career. It was the first time I had heard of public health, either as a career or even as a phrase. Now, exactly 100 years ago, in 1915, the Welsh Rose Report called
called for the creation of schools of public health training. The report reflected the different perspectives of Welsh, who wanted to focus on research, and Rose, who wanted to focus on practice. But in fact, research and practice are not a true dichotomy. If there is one thing that I hope you'll remember from these few words that stand between you and your diplomas, it is the importance of practicing interventional epidemiology throughout your careers. <laughs> now, interventional epidemiology will never be as lucrative as interventional cardiology or interventional radiology, <laughs> but it will save many times more lives. Our goal is not merely to study the world, but to change it. And to do that, both research and practice, both science and politics, are essential. I'd like to tell you about two questions. One of them changed my life, and one of them enabled public health to save millions of lives. On March 9th of 1993, a man named Carol Stieblo came to New York City and reviewed the tuberculosis control program, which I had been running for nearly a year. Overnight, he reviewed an information summary booklet that I had written and produced. And the next morning, he pointed out to me, to my great chagrin, many aspects of the epidemiology of tuberculosis that I had missed, but were apparent to him from reviewing that information summary. He then asked me, Dr. Frieden, this book tells me a lot, but it doesn't tell me the single most important thing. And I was quite offended. I said, well, what's that? And last year, you diagnosed 3,811 patients in New York City with tuberculosis. And I said, yes. And he said, well, how many of them did you cure? And I didn't know. I couldn't answer the question, and I was terribly ashamed. And the next day, I began a system of cohort review to monitor the progress and outcome of every single patient diagnosed with tuberculosis in New York City a system, incidentally, which would greatly benefit our healthcare system for many conditions ranging from HIV to hypertension to diabetes. Globally, because of Stieblow's work, more than 50 million patients have had their care rigorously monitored. 11 million people who would have died from tuberculosis have been cured. And this was done because of this rigorous and systematic evaluation of the outcome of each and every patient, along with effective program management to respond to what that rigorous evaluation showed. Program without evaluation is often rudderless, but evaluation without program is altogether pointless. Five years later, working in New Delhi, supporting the National Tuberculosis Control Program, we had made some progress, but the program was stalled because of bureaucratic infighting and corruption. It could only be unstuck with political intervention. And in the Indian version of, I know a guy who knows a guy, my Indian counterpart knew a politician who could get a message to the prime minister who could read it on the floor of parliament the next morning, and that would create enough pressure to get the program unstuck. But it had to be exactly right. And so it was that after four years of college, four years of medical school, three years of internal medicine training and infectious disease fellowship, two years of epidemic intelligence service, five years running the program in New York City, and two years in India, and 19 years after that walk in the on the trails of the Blue Ridge Mountains, I found myself at 10 o'clock at night, crouching out of sight in the back of a drab, beaten up Ambassador brand car in New Delhi with a laptop, computer, and portable printer to rework the paragraph if needed. In public health, you have to do whatever it takes to succeed. The speech work the program got started again, and India has now prevented more than three million deaths from tuberculosis. Politics and science are both necessary ingredients to interventional epidemiology. 
Now to the second question. Soon after I became New York City Health Commissioner, I crafted a proposal to make the city smoke-free. I pitched that to Mayor Bloomberg, who reviewed it carefully and then asked me after the preliminaries one essential question. Was I certain that this would save lives? And because of the rigor of the epidemiologic studies of smoke-free ordinances, I was able to reply with absolute certainty, yes. And he said, then we'll do it. Now, I tried to warn him that it was going to be pretty controversial, and I described the kind of opposition we would get, and he cut me off right away, and he said, do you know what the first rule of sales is? And I said, no. He said, once you make the sale, leave. Politics, like public health, is the art of the possible. Unfortunately, there are a limited number of times when you can have a confluence of opportunities to make rapid progress. And the historian John Duffy, who analyzed public health over the years, wrote that encountering apathy, ignorance, and avarice is the lot of all conscientious health officers. As preventive measures in the health area are more successful, the public is less inclined to support the programs which ensure this success. Interventional epidemiology uses valid, rigorous science to drive progress through program, evaluation, and legislation. When Mike Bloomberg took tobacco control global, science and politics, program, and evaluation have combined to prevent more than 12 million deaths, including close to 5 million from smoke-free ordinances, which now protect a billion more people than when the program was launched. In 49 countries, including places such as Brazil, Turkey, and even Russia, in 28 of the world's 100 largest cities, uh, including exotic places such as Hong Kong, Jakarta, and Houston. Next week, on June 1, Beijing will become smoke-free at least tobacco smoke-free. <laughs> a rough calculation suggests that Mike Bloomberg's investment in global tobacco control will save as many lives as many of the most successful public health programs in history and will do so at a cost of less than $50 per life saved. The world's first Ebola epidemic provided another example of the critical importance of interventional epidemiology. The epidemic has gone through phases. First, delayed recognition and response, a failure of politics and of science on the part of these countries and on the part of the world. Next, the exponential increase in Ebola and the world's first urban Ebola epidemic. Following that, breaking the back of exponential growth of the epidemic through mobilization of global resources to provide and sensitive community outreach to encourage the acceptance of safe care and, when necessary, safe burial. The next phase has been track and trace, core classic public health work of finding cases, finding contacts, monitoring them, gaining their trust, ensuring that if they become sick, they're promptly cared for. In this latest Ebola phase, the urban poverty pockets have become the last areas where Ebola has spread. In Liberia, an area known as the St. Paul Bridge area, harbored many patients who didn't trust society. They didn't come forward. They had the confluence of poverty, unemployment, alienation from government, poor housing, and illegal activities. And that called for enormous hard work and sensitivity of community members, Liberian health workers, epidemiologists from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and many others to find the chains of transmission, to provide the sensitive outreach, and ultimately to stop the outbreak. I know that all of you are focused, engaged, and committed to addressing the root causes of inequality and ill health in Baltimore and elsewhere. Cities have a very special role to play in this effort. It's not enough 
to mean well, we have to have effective programs. The road to hell is truly paved with good intentions. We not only need to scale up the implementation of evidence-based practices, we need to expand practice-based evidence, trying things, joining coalitions, seeing what works, rigorously evaluating through both science and politics programs to attack the roots of inequality. Albert Schweitzer wrote that I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I do know, the only ones among you who will be truly happy are those who have sought and found how to serve. The right time for public health is now. The right time for interventional epidemiology is now. There's never been a clearer understanding of both the need and the importance of our field. On my first day of medical school, the dean told us that half of everything we would learn would be wrong. But since they didn't know which half it was, we would be tested on all of it. <laughs> on this, the last day of this phase of your public health training, I think the good news is that there is so much still to be learned through both science and politics, through both knowing more and doing more, we can, with interventional epidemiology, save millions more lives. Thank you. So please, uh, please join me in thanking Tom for an inspirational talk. Okay. 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 Great conversation. Okay. 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 That was a great talk. Great talk. Uh, the part about half right or half wrong, you know, that doesn't apply to public health. That's medical school. Uh, okay. So, uh, so I now invite uh, Chief Marshal Mathis back to the uh, podium. Before graduates receive their hoods and diplomas, I invite Siva Baron Manivanan to recite the International Declaration of Health Rights. The document, composed by faculty and students on the occasion of the Schools of Public Health 75th anniversary, expresses the deepest aspirations of public health professionals and scientists. The declaration also appears on the last page of your program. A special printing of the declaration is available to each of these this afternoon's master's graduates after the ceremony. Doctoral candidates will receive their declarations from Dean Clegg as part of the hooding ceremony. Will the year 2015 graduating class please stand? We, as people concerned about health improvement in the world, do hereby commit ourselves to advocacy and action to promote health, promote, that, promote health rights of all human beings. The enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of health is one of the most fundamental rights of every human being. It's not a privilege reserved for those with power, money, or social standings. Health is more than the absence of disease, but includes the prevention of illness, development of individual potential, and a positive sense of physical, mental, and social well-being. Healthcare could be, should be based on a dialogue and collaboration between citizens, professionals, communities, and policymakers. Health services should be affordable accessible, effective, efficient, and convenient. Health begins with healthy development of the child and a positive family environment. Health must be sustained by the active role of men and women in health and development. The role of women and their welfare must be recognized and addressed. Healthcare for the elderly should preserve dignity, respect, 
and concern for quality of life and should not merely extend it. Health requires a sustainable environment with balanced human population growth and preservation of cultural diversity. Health depends on the availability to all people of basic essentials, food, safe water, housing, education, productive employment, protection from pollution, and prevention of alienation, social alienation. Health depends on protection from exploitation without distinction of race, religion, political belief, economic, or social condition. And finally, health requires peaceful and equitable development and collaboration of all peoples. The graduates may sit. Okay. The graduates who will be awarded the degree Master of Health Administration, Master of Health Science, Master of Science in Public Health, Master of Public Policy, Master of Science, and Master of Public Health will now be presented with their diplomas. We request that the audience hold applause for individual graduates and applaud instead following the groups of graduates in degree programs. We also ask that graduates remain in the hall until the end of the ceremony. Additionally, we ask that guests not approach the stage for photographs as each graduate will have his or her picture taken. Master graduates should note that these are the real diplomas. <laughs> treat, them, treat them with care. After the ceremony, diploma tubes will be available to you at the regalia return station located at the end of the Meyerhoff driveway. Will the Master of Health Administration candidates seated in rows C and D please rise and form a procession in the aisle to your right. Dean Schlegel, please come to the podium to, podium to announce the graduates. Good afternoon. Will the graduates who will be awarded the degree of Masters of Health Administration come forward to receive your diplomas as your name is called? John Michael Adamovich. <laughs> Alexandra Blanchard Bono. <laughs> Anthony D'Angelo. Lucas Alexander Devine. <laughs> Liat Jobola. <laughs> Natasha Gill. Sophie Catherine Holmes. Lavia Kessler. Arthi Romnick Kodadia. Jordan Kurtzman. Chelsea Lang. Mario Emmanuel Nelson. Catherine Park. <laughs> Ms.
Noreen Qureshi. Sindhu Ravi. Chase Ryan Roberts. Lucas Henry Sater. Caleb Hughes Schwartzbach. Jennifer Song. Ashley Ann Thompson. Allison Elaine Winokur. Arit Zotarian. On behalf of the school and the university, I would like to congratulate the most recent group of Masters of Health Administration graduates. <laughs> will the graduates who will be awarded the degree of Masters of Health Science come forward to receive your diplomas? Camille Abdullah. Joseph Aquaviva. Jackie Bernard Kane Light Aganan. Rita Amal. Shinwa Bien. <laughs> Samana Bolurchi. <laughs> Hannah Braun. Weston Lee Buring. Jonan Felipe Kapanuski. Margaret Claire Cantera. Tania Chatterjee. Hi. Olivia Gail Kosai. Thank you. Wendy Da. Gassian Dubrucker. <laughs> Millie J.D. Desai. <laughs> John Federico Di Capua. Vadim Alexandrovich Duhanin.
Colby Heron Ison. Emma Ehrlich. Adora Ijoma Azike. Susan A. Fallon. Anna Fretz. Maha Hakani. Mike Zhang Yu He. You won her. Matthew Allen Hurd. Michael Robert Held. Jenica Anasuya Henderson. Aaron Sue. Shu Yang Hu. Sun He Hu. Simon Hua. Christopher Yuki Ito. Jordan Johnson. Martha Elizabeth Johnson. Congratulating Martha is her husband, Caleb Alexander, associate professor in EPI. Tendo Jokomo. Arvin Kaur Jandoria. Aditi Kalu. D.T. Bagam Kentampuli. Afreen Zam Khan. Kunaz Unjam Khan. Alexander James Kirk. Emily Knapp. Anna Krasnova. Unru Lai.
Julia Ann Marie Longer. Kimberly Leahy. Ji Yu Lee. Lin J. Lee. Ma Lee. Dora Hung Yu Lin. Ala Majid. Hoda Majid. Gaida Hassan Majub. Onwishu Majumder. Renate Alexandra Marcus. Heather Laney Matson. Emily Starr Metzger. Sydney Taylor Mock Myers. Mishka Angelica Mukhtar. Zeta Sharisa Marie Muhammad. Grace Anna Morgan. Lauren Elizabeth Ruth Morris. Joseph Gerard Nugent. Rantimi Oluwagarshan. Stephanie Ann Marie Owusu. Min Sun Park. Neha Patel. Karen Pereira. Robert Piotrowski. Samantha Pollock. Meredith Zakia Rahman. Benjamin Dennis Rouse. Elizabeth Kathleen Ruiz. Thomas Edward Schmidt. Tina Atutikine Seydu. <laughs> K 
Kiwon Che. John Louise Silverstein. Congratulating John is his grandfather, Charles Silverstein, associate professor in the School of Medicine. Samia Singh. Richard Alex Skelton. Sherna Sofer. Wazerut Sinsintun. Talia Stewart. Martin Michael Tian. Dominic Gordon Thompson. Mary Elizabeth Trinan. Hayuing Wong. Raven Wong. Ajo Wu. Yanzin Yao. <laughs> Olga Yatsenko. <laughs> Liwen Zhang. Irma Tian Young. Suzeping Zhou. On behalf of the school and the university, I would like to congratulate the most recent group of Masters of Health Science graduates. Novia Adolfi. <laughs> Caroline Aguiar. <laughs> Keely Christina Anderson. Yvonne Agwini. <laughs> Avery Elizabeth Crawford Artman. Sarah Baker. James Bow, Kate Juliana Baquis,
Shauna Nicole Bartley. Elizabeth Jane Byer. Amanda Elizabeth Belknap. Blair Olivia Berger. Erin Maureen Benosh Beal. Stephen John Blaz. Carolyn Adele Brown. Melinda Noel Brown. Audrey Buckland. Kimberly Burke. Mary Elizabeth Ross Burner. Hi. Lydia Roche Burney. Emmanuel Ann Calvey. Ray Chen. S. Jennifer Choi. Christopher Cox. Brianna Ashley Dance. Mithali Dial. Lauren Ingersoll Dayton. Kristen Devlin. Denise Dorchak Ochola. <laughs> Keely Eastman. Victoria Elliott. <laughs> Doug Fallon. Yu Fun Marie Constance Ferguson Claire Montgomery Fitch Danielle Garfinkel Emily Gargiulo. Lisa G. Megan Hope Harrison. Anissa Harsha.
Allison Helmers. Leah Horton. Mary Houghton. Jessica Kadurka Houston. Sandra Wei Huang. Sarah Ismat Islam. Lisa Jacobs. Yulong G. Danielle Sunny Young. Priya Karna. Carolyn Shirley Katz. Orla Kennedy. Jane Kim. Caitlin Merrick Lairmore. Kaylee Brett Lambden. Ariel Catherine Landers. Elizabeth Ann Larson. Esther Lee. Nicole Rayan Lee. Lindsay Tyler Leslie. C. Lee. Isaac Leaf. Jessica Lynn. Emily Lyles. Joanna Kristen McKenzie. Amy Gatto. Mangum Harriet May Martin Ryan Max Morgan McCloskey Christopher Miller. <laughs> Julia Miller. Natasha 
Sakia Murphy. Thank you. Tomoka Nakamura. Allison Lindsay Russell Nelson. Paloma Monteros Newcomb. Lillian Heen Nguyen. Rahim Noor Mohammed. Megan Louise O'Connell. Yasmin Parvizi Ogale. Semi Esther Pak. Pang Ming Fan. Shuru Park. Zachary Earl Patterson. Kate Parapesco. Jennifer Payton. April Maria Pinner. Benjamin D. Pollock. Jasmine Annette Ragland. Shantae Amelia Ramsby. Kathleen Marie Ridgeway. Farheen Zera Rizvi. <laughs> Diana Carillo Rodriguez. <laughs> Pia Rose. Imara Roy Chowdhury. <laughs> Melissa Sattler. Ron Saxton. Catherine Shim. Eleanor Marie Shedder. Kara Sumi. Christian Armstrong Treat. Grace Annabelle Trompeter. Allison Rumsoth Trump.
Nikki Athena Volgaropoulos. Michelle Christine Wilcox. Christine K. Williams. Marta Gabrielle Wilson Barts. Kevin Daniel Wright. Amanda Wiley. Justin Christopher Young. Sheelan Joe. On behalf of the school and the university, I would like to congratulate the most recent group of Master of Science in Public Health graduates. Will the graduates who will be awarded the degree of Master of Public Policy come forward to receive your diplomas? Agnes Bala. Cassie Bowles. Kira Castaldo. Sammy Chuxi. Hewitt Gatane. Eli Samuel Greenfield. Ariana Nichelle Hutchison. Shankar Karthikeyan. Mutsing Lee. Chitan Liu. Hung Liu. Chen Xiao Song. Nancy Lay Tyler. Bo Wong. Xiao Tianyao. Xiaojo Drew. On behalf of the school and the university, I would like to congratulate the most recent group of Master of Public Policy graduates.
Will the graduates who will be awarded the degree of Master of Science come forward to receive your diplomas? Ornob Alam. Maya Ann Aleshnik. Jean Michaelina Clement. Laura Fami. Kation Jin. Maureen. Kessler, Andrew LaRue, Jessica Lee Ointman, Yuan J. Pong. Shahar Shmuel. Eric Yao. Yue Chan Zhang. On behalf of the school and the university, I would like to congratulate the most recent group of Master of Science graduates. Will the graduates who will be awarded the degree of Master of Public Health come forward? to receive your requirements. <laughs> Rachel Leah Abbott. Ahmed Abdul Basit. <laughs> Kylie Daniela Abison. Lisa Abrams. Hawa Ozean Abu. Hawa Abu Bukar. Alex Adams. Olu Bu Seo Adebu Su E. Ahmad Adi. Ogochukum Nakichi Agajelu. Priyanka Agarwal. <laughs> Angela De Mutu Lak Are Raha.
Zohaib Akhtar. Hamdan Alamari. Alea Tariq Al Baghdad Dahi. Muath Abdullah Hadosari. Muhammad Adel Al Fazan. Bander Ahmed Alhamdin. Ahmed Noor Al Qasir. Amna Mohammed Al Khuzai. Adelin Claire Alchin. Dima Mohammed Amutawa. Abdullah Salhiman Al Mutawa. Nada Al Naji. Rahed Al Tabi. Faisal Jubran Al Katani Sharif Al Katani Mansoor Al Rumayan Al Johara Al Saba Farez Abdullah Al Sela Alexia Agno Stupulus Sean Timothy Andrews. Otis Sararpong Apal. Jessica Appleson. Juan Carlos Arroyo. Adejara Atonda. Iman Eljak. Ahmad Mohammed Badagesh Andrew James Baldwin Oluwasewan Perosola Bonjour
Basim Ahmad Baragaba. Emilia Basilio. Razan Abdullah Basanbul. Elizabeth Sarah Bost. Noel Battle. Madeline Beebe. Andrew James Belli. Lorenzo Bertizzolo. Amir Barmal. Ratia Basin. Theory Sundar Bickle. Marissa Ashley Beck. Robert Anthony Bonacci. Anna Elizabeth Bondi. Erica Liana Boothman. Richard Alden Bruno. Emily Burris. Kevin Devaney Burns. Isla Ann Cash. Srihari Katamunchi. Vanessa Cavalera. Sarah Saponis. Natalie Chan. Mary Pearl Chang. Jerome Chulila. Annie Chang. Garuni Choti Prasita Salku. Samantha Clark. <laughs> Catherine Lindsay Kahn. <laughs> Kevin James Contrera. Okay. 
Nayef Dajim. Farouk Deko. Nilesh Deshun Ponde. Mirain Dudasia. Ashley Edmiston. Lee F. Feared. Olu Bumi Maria Amiduyo. Blessing a uh, Jamin Aino Boon. So sorry, will you do the middle name? Just yeah. Ross Graham Everett. <laughs> Whitney Ferris Ewing. Catherine Stockton Farr. <laughs> Natalie Lynn Flath. <laughs> Ivana Hasmeen Freddy. Jenna Hokulani Yuklan Gabrio. Anne Marie John Julio. <laughs> Haley Gibbs. Felicity Gonzalez. <laughs> Rafael Ulises Gonzalez Barros. <laughs> Sarah Goodman. <laughs> Ariel Gorstein. Xiao Yu Guan. <laughs> Venkat Pradeep Gundareddy. <laughs> Avni Gupta. <laughs> Rachel Lynn Goodfriend. Rui Gutierrez. <laughs> Sara Habibyar. <laughs> Marla Hallisey. <laughs> Esma Hamid. Woon Kyung Han. <laughs> Jeffrey James Hardesty. <laughs> Mariel E. Harding. <laughs> Dr.
Juan Van Oliver Harris. Sun Yin Ho. <laughs> Tiffany Fei Ho. <laughs> Diane Joy Horbath Cosper. Megan Mia Hossein. <laughs> Floor Huang. <laughs> Onyu Kachuku Anuli Ilo. <laughs> Junichi Ishigami. Khalid Jarak. <laughs> Lee Jang. <laughs> Irmayas Jiru. <laughs> Ross Stephen Johnson. Lily Elizabeth Johnston. <laughs> Hannah Jones. <laughs> Acadia Kasha Ochana. Farin Iqbal Karachiwala. <laughs> Catherine Ida Castleman. <laughs> Ravinder Kara. <laughs> Mohammed Abbas Khan. Edward Kim. <laughs> Kun Hua Kim. <laughs> Sybil Ann Klaus. Joseph Klemchek. <laughs> Nobuhiro Kuhu.